back. This is the 32 boys one cup Korean group number two and this is the finals It's a best of three to determine which of these two will be the last player out of this group joining departure in the round of 16 Now before we do this once again since it's a new series Thank you to the sponsors of this tournament chairs for gaming chairs for gaming.com chairs for gaming.ca They sell DX racer chairs to Canada and the United States and most importantly ship them for free And of course if you use promo code base Street TV you get $20 off no big deal CM storms provided us with a lot of cool stuff to give away and help with prize pools of these tournaments You follow them on Twitter at CM underscore esports do me a favor though personally if you're willing tweet at them Tell them thanks for putting on this awesome event 32 boys one cup and last but not least the newest sponsor proxy.gg These guys are an esports fantasy team uh, website basically like the part 2 system You know on base trade TV except you can actually cash in your points for prizes And of course once again base trade TV is the code over there if you want some free points but Let's hop into it, shall we? I'm Rifkin casting with Zombie Grub, and in this final best of three, in the top left corner of the map, we find the Yoey Flash Wolves new acquisition, parting. The bottom right, as the blue Protoss, it's Samsung Galaxy Stork. Now this is a treat. Again, mirror matchups in general, I think the majority of people dislike. I know I'm not the biggest fan of them in general. Uh, especially at lower level play, but this is going to be PvP at the top of its game. It's going to be PvP in the Korean level. So basically, what that means is we're going to see a lot of games that either end in five minutes with, you know, or ten minutes rather, with like three gate aggression, or we're going to see the really long games. And I'm personally pining for the long games. I don't know if you were up in time for it. Did you hear about the WC WECG match this morning? I, uh, no. It's a Hero Sora, like 50 minute Tempest game. <laughs> I'm like oh, deadly. yeah, I did not. I did not. That's interesting. I've, I've only had the displeasure of casting one of those before, but it's one that you know, I could see getting to that point with these guys. But uh, parting already be a little bit sneaky with the second pylon. This is just meant to confuse your opponent when they scout and they look and see, hey, wait, are you proxying? Where's your second pylon? Yeah, yeah. You know what I really like about it is that we had two PV, we had nothing but PVZs, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then we have like a cherry on top, which is finally a mirror batcha. Boink. Nope. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the way we had to do the groups just kind of worked out like that. I personally would have loved to have seen two mirror matchups to start and then feed into the rest of the tournament, but... Uh, could you not? Well, I I, I didn't, clearly, so <laughs> there you go. Thank you. If we Thank see a lot of mirror adding. matchups in the uh, round of 16, you know who to blame. Uh, okay then. Okay, so well, it's got um, that pile on the way out, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know, I don't, I couldn't read their, you know, Korean that that... I'm not that advanced yet, but it just seems like, you know, Parting was kind of like crying about it, or maybe they're crying about having to face each other. Um, I don't know if they're like friends, or if they don't like PvP, or if they both thought the Departure was the guy that was going to go out last instead of the first. I think it's got to be the, fa the the latter, right? Like, Departure is kind of that guy who just, like, surprised us all. I mean, Gumiho was actually really scared to fight him, too, when we were talking about trying to schedule groups for him. So, mm. I mean, Departure, I just kind of feel like a snake in the grass where, like, a couple people know how deadly he is, but no one else does. Yeah, seems like fun. it. <clears throat> well, we got Stork going for a Twilight Council. Uh, his probe will unfortunately die, so no proxies. That was the plan. Rip. Okay, this is a uh, DT. This is a DT. This is a DT. Okay, so this is something where normally you can sneak out a quick win, but Parting's not only gone for the faster Robo here. He's also expanding really early. Departure yeah. is not going to scout this for some time, which is really problematic because every time we see this in PvP. Whoever can get their Nexus out first, it's it's kind of similar to ZVZ, like with that third base mentality. Like if you can expand to PvP and get ahead, you'll stay ahead for a decent amount of time. These dark, shri this dark shrine, these dark Templar, they're not going to shut him down because if this was like a three gate opener with Blink, yeah, Pardu's got no detection, he's screwed. But he's going to have observers yeah. out. This is not a problem for him. Yeah, this is um. It's gonna be hard pressed to find that one opportunity where maybe they only got one observer and it went across the map. That could certainly still happen. It's just you know, you know with the chrono boost, observers you know they build pretty fast. You just doesn't get a lot of kills. You really are banking on them doing something more aggressive uh, and less safe. Which isn't a isn't a bad guess to make if Stork's just going off of what he knows about parting. You know, parting probably is you know he's very confident. You know, so it's like aggression because he's confident, especially in PvP. Uh, but it's just not the case. <laughs> he's he's macroing. He's expanding. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Oh, the dynamic of a natural base is such a weird and awkward and big deal, but um, Stork just kind of gets that timing out. He knows, alright, it's about that time. I'm doing a bit of aggression myself. Maybe I can do a lot of damage, but here's the thing. Observe on the front oh, line. Oh, dear God. You could have waited 20 more seconds and maybe something would have happened, but nope. 
I don't know that that Observer would have gone right across the map. Now, he gets two sentries for this, so I mean, this is yeah. kind of cost-effective. Not the worst <laughs> way to use those DTs. Yeah, that actually wasn't that bad. I kind of like that Stork at least, you know, did something. Because if you ran away, those units would have ca caught you. At least you killed two sentries. It was all right. <clears throat> of course, behind the Stork did expand, so he's not like, uh, you know, SOL. He's not doing the, the follow-up Archon all lane or anything weird, but his next is considerably later. War Prism coming out from Stork. I like this idea. Then you try and get back into it. This could be just to get a War Prism or a DT into the main. It could just be to just try and harass like, at all with whatever he has, whatever he can, you know, even if it's just Zealots. Yeah, DT warp into the main might not be too bad. There are some Protoss players who'll do the Paranoia Cannon, but it's so... It's just... I don't know what it is. The Terran players are so quick to put on turrets. Zerg players litter the map with Spore Claws, but Protoss players are so hesitant to build static defense no, with partying. because Observers. Observers are so good. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, but still, he actually does it, and that's kind of the key thing. It's, yeah. it's a rare thing to see, but it's an absolutely safe way to make sure you don't lose this game. Yeah, and you gotta figure you're ahead, so, like, instead of hitting two cannons, at least your worries, and they're gonna be useful later on, if it gets to the late game. Oh, Harding accidentally starts War Prism, but it is gonna be an immortal for him. We see, uh, you know, it's been a long time since we've seen, you know, Pros vs. Pros be about who gets the Colossus first and who gets the most Colossus. I've actually been referring going up to it maybe even four immortals before. Uh, choosing Colossus or High Templars, or parting it is going to be High Templars. Well, the first DT gets on here, uh, a little bit unseen, but... Yeah, Cannon, uh, already on top of this. A little bit awkward too with that move rally. One more shot? Yeah. Nah, I can't quite finish it. Uh, he sees the War Prism too, he's actually going to come and pick this up. I mean, he could merge these into an Archon. Oh, this is kind of... No. Oh, I actually can't see it, just barely. But it's still not worth it. Where's the observer going to come here? Yeah. And maybe later it'll be picked off. Maybe. Okay, so parting, I kind of like... I want to see storm drops. It's not something you see a lot of in PvP. And, I mean, um... It, it's always really cool when it happens, of course. But at the same time, like, what do you what do you really need these storms on, right? They've been kind of making their way into PvP now. But if you're looking for that AoE victory, like, Colossus are the way to go. 100% of the time. It's got to be storm drops. You know, Storm can be effective against, you know, a, a bunched up Protoss army, so it's not necessarily bad to get, but that's usually after, like, three, four bases, you know, where you're kind of getting upgrades because you can, you have that much money. Um, this earlier on, it's got to be to actually just surprise Storic with how, with a really fast Storm drop. That's usually late game. Also maneuvering around here, doing what he can. Uh, the pylon was never discovered over here, and party moves towards a third. And again, this is one of the situations where Stork might not scout this. He might get that intuition to go for his own third, but if he waits too long, it could be very problematic. So, I mean, that's the difference too. You get double robot production in the late game, extra Archons on the field, big, huge Zealot run by, all these you know, other mm. messy things that can happen. But, uh, okay, he does see this, so not going to be super awkward. Still yeah. very insistent on trying to use the DTs, though. I I'd like say that he has to be, but honestly, Stork is, uh, is caught up. Okay, now it was a big warp from parting, so the armies might dips down again, but they were at, you know, even... Oh, oh missed God, you missed, the, you missed the storm drop. I was looking around to see what he's doing. I know I'm bad. I'm bad. Oh, I was like, I was going to say, like, oh, he's at 43 to 42, and then suddenly dipped down to 36. I was like, oh, oh. damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah. never mind. I was going to say how Stork actually caught up in this game, but now it's, um, well, now it's just not. He's behind an army supply, he's behind in probes, and he just looks close to him. Okay, the war person going down, I think, is the bigger deal here. Like, three probes down, not the craziest thing in the world. His third base is still on track. I just, these DTs really didn't get much done this game. And parting, uh, even though the storm was used once, it doesn't mean it won't be used again. And the other thing on top of this is, we see so many times, what's a good way to stop a mothership core? Bam, feedback, right? So, if he can kill that thing before he gets involved with the fight, he gets rid of time warps, which are a huge deal in the late game. Um, DT up here in the third, still looking to go ahead at it, but I'm... Mm. The army's waiting. He doesn't want to get caught off guard by it again. Cannon's on the way too, but he could just go to the main. And I kind of feel like it's hitting that time of the game too, where a main, a main uh, storm drops gonna be better because there's less mineral, less mineral patches, so probes are more stacked. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's doing too. Uh, it would be so awesome oh. if he went to the militia core and feedback. Like you said, though, you rarely ever think about that, but it is certainly. Oh, he effective. pulls right away. He pulls right away. Second storm's gonna get a couple more probe kills here. Three do go down, and uh, uh, game heart storms look really cool. Just side note. <laughs> yeah, the purple storms, neon, woo. Still insisting on using these DTs. I mean, the resources lost is not so much that you're like, wow, he's behind hundred, you know, a thousand minerals. He's screwed. But it's kind of like, yo, dude, how much more are you expected to get out of this? Uh, he's actually gonna go for the Archon, so no, no more with these storm drops. 
and parting supply is just out of control. <laughs> yeah, 78 armor supply, there's 49. Their upgrades oh. are very similar. You'll be sick. Don't use this for the fight. Just drop this in the natural base when he attacks the front. Looks like that's his plan. Uh, hallucinating Phoenix is not that big of a deal. More more Templar coming to the front lines. And again, whether it's a feedback for the Mothership Corps, whether it's storms on top of the army, um, this is... I don't know. This is like an attack and a timing that I'm, I'm more used to seeing players like San try to execute. Like, yeah, he's definitely someone who's been kind of away from the Warp Prism. Or sorry, away from the Colossus tech lately. But Archon brought to the front lines. Warp in. No Colossus on either side. It just comes down to numbers and Parting's got way more. He even baits out two Time Warps before the fight even begins. Got a feedback, did you know? That's just saying. Well, uh, wait. feedback or not, this storms now, which is going to blanket a lot of this army. It'll chew through the hardened shields really quick too, I guess. Is the other benefit to this, but oh my god, this storm looks so cool. <laughs> Stroke could uh, hold on a little longer. As plus three will finish. Um, not really sure how that's really going to be so helpful though. Well, he just focuses down his base like it's nothing at all. Wow, did Almost... you just feedback a sentry? Almost no defense on these lines. Party supply still leads in a big way. And that storm's gonna cover these zealots as he falls back. They kite through them. The Archons and the sentries also gonna go down. And Parting has still got a massive army supply lead. The Immortal's kind of irrelevant at this point because the Archons are what's gonna carry him through this. GG. Game number one will go to Parting.